Hey everybody, this is Nazdarachi here, aka Wild Technique, coming back from a long little seance there. Um, as you can see, I'm loading up Neverwinter here. It's a game that I've been playing for the past few months. Uh, very heavily Dungeons and Dragons based, and also it it borrows a lot from games like World of Warcraft and uh, like Star Wars: The New Republic. Um, not normally a huge fan of MMO games. Actually, I really don't like them at all. But uh, I figured I'd go ahead and give this one a try because I do love playing tabletop D&D. So I kind of got sucked into it. Uh, now, this video is going to be just a short introduction to the game, what you can expect, and my take on the best possible DPS control wizard build. Um, now there are quite a few classes you can play in this game, very similar to other fantasy, RPG, MMO top type games. Uh, you do have like your rogue, your great weapon fighter, your control wizard, warlock, hunter ranger, uh, there's a priest, a, <clears throat> or a cleric rather, and a paladin. So you have your pretty standard classes. Um, I went with the control wizard because I've always been a fan of using magic and, and stuff like that. So. I said fuck it, and uh, I got myself a character now that is, is end game and capable of doing all the content in the game. So I figured I would give you guys a quick little build here uh, for the best DPS and um, <clears throat> just overall damage in general that you can get out of your control wizard. Now control wizards in this game are focused around doing damage with a secondary of uh, crowd control. Uh, most of their abilities are based around ice or freezing, uh, stunning targets, um, so you're gonna want to capitalize on that, but there are certain items, there's a certain build you can do that'll really upgrade your damage, which will be super important because as the game progresses, most of the high tier enemies uh, and end game bosses are immune to crowd control, so that really kind of uh, makes your damage category the, the useful one for, for really being able to be viable in any type of endgame stuff. <laughs> so I am in just the main area now and uh, don't really have anything going on here. So I'll go ahead and show you my uh, characters set up here. Uh, we do have all purple gear and nice legendary artifacts not mythic unfortunately it's insane to get your stuff that high but you're gonna want to spec your items mostly in crit build as you can see you know you're gonna want things like a ring of rising precision that stacks crit you're gonna want uh, the Valindra belt because it uh, stacks intelligence and charisma you're gonna want uh, to actually split sets end game you don't want to use the Valindra set solely because it really only provides benefits to your crowd control which like I said in the end game stuff really is is not useful at all so I honestly use the Valindra belt for the intelligence stats and then I'll go with the crit build that the Lost Moth set gives you so Lost Moth horn, Lost Moth pendant now I know this is gonna sound like Chinese to anyone who's really not experienced with this game but it basically has a loot system that's very similar to World of Warcraft or Diablo if you're familiar with playing either of those games where you kind of run dungeons and then pick up stuff as you go and as you get more powerful you'll end up replacing all your gear with better stuff and there's tons of ways they try and convince you to spend money in this game uh, I generally wouldn't recommend spending money on this game other than buying the VIP which is ten dollars a month uh, <clears throat> now you can earn in-game currency similar to World of Warcraft and buy your your premium status with in-game currency so for all those players who want to go completely free to play you do not have to spend money really in this game at all uh, the other thing that you're gonna want to get is a purple mount they cost thirty five dollars so between one to one point four million astral diamonds which is the uh, main player uh, based currency for trading and buying items so yeah getting the mount and getting the VIP status are really all you're gonna want to spend money on um, unless you're blessed with wealth and it really doesn't matter now having the VIP status gives you one key a day that you can use to open these lockboxes right here and those are gonna be your main source of 
tradable goods, uh, gear, and some really good epic endgame stuff can come from these, as well as legendary. Like you can get a mount from any one of these four, a different orange legendary mount. Uh, of course, the chances of that are astronomically low, but it's still, you know, possible. Now, of course, you can buy keys to open these. They cost $1.25 a piece, which I think is kind of laughable. But, like I said, if you get the VIP, especially if you earn it with in-game uh, currency, don't spend any real money, you can get one of those keys per day for free just with that VIP status. So, honestly, that's your best way to go when playing this game when, uh, when you're trying to decide, you know, if you really want to spend money or not. Really, just the mount. The, the fucking VIP status. That's all you really need to worry about. <clears throat> now, with that being said, for the wizard, you are going to want to uh, get some certain items, which people that are familiar with this game are going to know. And like I said, if you've never really played this game, this is this is going to sound like Swahili to you, but you're going to want to, like I said, split the Lost Moth set and the Valindra Belt. Because the plus intelligence that it gives you and charisma are your control wizard's main damage stats. So those are going to improve your damage much more significantly than if you're using all three pieces of the Lost Moth set. You are going to want the artifact from your own class, the Sigil of the Controller. Uh, I would also recommend a Lantern of Revelation, the Lost Moth's Horn, and I'm using the Wheel of Elements because it's... Uh, activation power, that 30% bonus damage, is invaluable. Uh, it really, really, really helps, especially when you're fighting bosses. So I would definitely recommend that. Uh, you could also sub any of these out for the Belial's Portal Stones, the Thayan Book of the Dead. Um, you know, you could use the Shard of Valindra's Crown as well, but like I, I really said, I, I would not recommend uh, specking in that, that uh, set for a full build. <coughs> Now over here on the left side, the non-accessory side, uh, I'm splitting the Dragonflight and the Dusk set. Uh, these are both two endgame sets that provide their own unique bonuses, uh, and I'll explain why I have each one split the way I do. <clears throat> uh, the, the Dragonflight cap, first of all, is hands down better than the Dusk uh, caps that you have available to you. The stats are just better no matter what. So, I would honestly go with one of those. The chest piece for the Dusk is much better for DPS um, than the Dragonflight chest piece. Uh, the Dragonflight full set does give you 500 power uh, as a bonus for having three pieces equipped, but the Dusk set with two pieces gives you 1,000 power as long as you're in a group. So that's why splitting the sets, in my opinion, is the best way to go. And as well, the Dragonflight armor and the um, uh, boots, well the boots are better than the dusk boots as well, but you kind of need them to have two pieces of the dusk set. But the dusk raid robes are much more damage crit oriented than the dragonflight robes. Uh, the dragonflight robes full set is really a better set for a healer, like a cleric. But uh, yeah, so that's why I'm splitting the dusk set, because you get, for having two pieces of dragonflight, you do get bonus health. Um, for having the two pieces of the dust, you get a thousand power instead of 500. So it's just better to have two pieces of each instead of having three of the Dragonflight. Now to get the Dragonflight stuff, you do have to be part of a high level guild uh, that has the ability to buy that. I think you need Marketplace level three and four to buy most everything. Um, I think at 3 you get the accessories, Dragonflight, and at 4 you get the actual main armor pieces. So that's something to consider. If you can't get into a guild that has the ability for you to get Dragonflight, uh, I would either go mostly Dusk, which is what I was doing before I got the Dragonflight, or I would split your stuff up, uh, maybe with the Drowcraft set, depending on how much crit and uh, armor pen you might need. Now the Drowcraft set can be purchased in the Underdark at any time, and there's no requirements for you to unlock it other than the currency that you need to buy it, which is the Demonic Icker, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. If it's not Demonic Icker, it seals the Protector. So either way, you need to do epic dungeons and do high level stuff to earn the currency to buy what you need, but the uh, Drowcraft set is very 
very inexpensive and easy to come by. So weapons, uh, I was using the burning weapons before because they do give you the 25% uh, action points back most of the time once you use your daily power, which is like your ultimate if you were trying to reference this in uh, League of Legends style game. But uh, ultimately you're going to want these twisted weapons. Um, as a control wizard, you do damage uh, about five to ten times per second. So the stacks will always be full. Uh, the set bonus for the twisted set is it gives you uh, 160 power per stack, and it can stack up to 24 times. So yeah, you will pretty much always have that bonus 3,000 some odd power because your stacks never drop. Um, your stacks drop basically if you attack successfully, you gain a stack. <clears throat> and if you are attacked, you lose a stack of the power buff and you gain 160 defense. So this set is honestly good for tanks or DPS. Because if you're a tank, you're getting hit a lot, you'll be stacking defense. If you are a DPS and you attack a lot, you'll be stacking a lot of power. Which is going to increase your uh, damage quite significantly. Uh, the burning set is the one I would recommend if you... Uh, cannot run the master demos that you need to to get this twisted set or if you can't afford buying the twisted set directly from the marketplace so that is what I would recommend um, burning set for uh, getting the action points back until you can afford the twisted set now again that's all end game stuff so you really need to get to level 70 before you're gonna appreciate this game I know as annoying as that sounds it's just very similar to like any other MMO that you may have played so, honestly, if you're not either a fan of Dungeons & Dragons or MMOs, you probably won't really like this game. Uh, and if you're not a fan of Dungeons & Dragons, you might not really like this game either, because there are other MMOs out there that might cater to you instead of this one. But, uh, <clears throat> importantly, is going for DPS, you want to stack crit, you want to stack armor pen up until you get 60%, and you want to stack power. Uh, Crit being one of the more important, then power being the next. As you can see, I am stacking more power just because it is easier to get power in this game than it is crit. But you want your numbers to be looking somewhat like this, um, if not better. Yeah, I'm still only like mid end game, like mid high range. You know, my item level is only 2889, as you can see in the bottom left, right to the left of where my cursor was a second ago. Now, there are people that are well over 3,000, 4,000, and those people's numbers are going to be absurdly higher than mine. But this is a good medium end game target range. As you can see, I have pretty much a 50% chance to crit, and pretty much 50% resistance ignored. Those are very important stats, because you want to be critting frequently, and you want to ignore as much damage as possible on your uh, targets. Now, my stats actually go up quite significantly because <clears throat> we'll go to companions now and on your companion as a DPS class you're gonna want a striker companion for when you're in groups and you're gonna want a tanking defender companion for when you're soloing now on either one of those if you have offensive slots you should be putting bonding rune stones I mean even if you have defensive slots you should probably be putting bonding rune stones because if it's the tank, it'll benefit from the defense. But the purpose of these is every time your companion attacks, it has a chance to grant you a bonus to your stats based off its stats. So the higher quality you have on these rune stones, the more stats you're going to get sent to yourself when your companion's attacking. So as you can see, I have 50%, 50%, and 35%. So I'm gaining 135% of these stats over here every time my companion attacks. And that's kind of how bonding runestones work. You definitely want them because that makes my power, instead of being 16,000, my armor pen being only 4,000, and my crit being only 10,000, you know, I get 135% of these added into my main character stats. So over here, you know, this is going to be plus over 3,000 more, over 20,000. This is going to be, you know, over 12,000, and this is going to be probably around 6,000. Which basically puts me at a 55% crit rate, and the cap for damage resistance ignored is 60%, and this puts me at about 
59.8%. So I'm, I'm pretty good with that. So on your companions, for a DPS class, you're going to want to have, like I said, a striking companion and a defending companion as your main companions. Then, in my personal opinion, you're going to want to stack three Archons. Uh, Archons came in the chest of, what is it, the Glorious Resurgence, I believe, lockboxes. They can come from these right here, Glorious Resurgent lockbox, or you can just buy them directly on the auction house. Uh, they range in price and quality, depending on around up, you know, 30000 for the cheapest green quality, all the way up to dang near a million for the um, purple epic quality uh, fire archon now the ones you're gonna want to use in the archon in my personal opinion are the earth fire and air uh, the reason you want to use these three is because of their active bonus like as to the left down here you can see the active bonus will increase your damage against targets by four percent when you are at full health this one will increase your damage against targets with less than 50% health by 4. And this one increases your damage against targets that are not at full health by 3%. So basically, the more Archons you have, as you can see in the second sentence, each additional active Archon increases this bonus by half a percent. So having three Archons, period, adds 1.5% to all of their active bonus base damage. Then... When you're attacking an enemy, they work in tandem. So if I'm at full health, I'm doing 4% damage. When the target is not at full health, I add 3%. So if I'm at full health and the target's damaged, I'm now at 7%. If the target is less than 50% health and I'm at full health, that goes up to 11%. And then you add one and a half more percent for having three Archons. So you're up to 12.5% increased damage in that situation just from having these three Archons in your inactive roster. And as you upgrade them in quality from green to blue and blue to purple and potentially up to legendary orange, that number will increase as well. But only your active Archon is going to need the bonding rune stones and the really good gear. You really just need the other guys for their passives and uh, one tanking companion. So that's about how that goes. Those are the fundamentals you're gonna want for building a DPS character with strong companions and a good strong item build. Uh, you do not want any artifacts that give you defense or lifesteal, uh, not even really recovery. I mean, recovery in this game are your cooldowns, which is really useful, but you really wanna stack power, armor pen, and crit. And then you want to stop stacking armor pen as soon as you hit that 60% cap, because anything more you stack on top of that is just wasted. You could be socketing, you know, gems that do plus crit or plus power instead. So see how on all your items at a high levels you have these enchantment slots where you can put various different enchantments. Obviously you're going to want to be stacking crit so you have your Azure enchantments, they give you critical strike. Uh, you can get your hands on an orange ring, they have two offensive slots, which is pretty invaluable because you can stack a whole lot of good stats. Uh, I do have some armor pen in this one because I'm not quite at that 60% cap yet. So, increasing the level of your items, which can get fairly expensive with in-game currency or real money should you choose to spend it, is going to be your best way to get your item level up. You want more damage, so you are going to want these certain items. Uh, this is my professional build here with that. Now, in terms of the powers for the Control Wizard, we're going to want four main powers and one main uh, daily power or superpower. And then there's also two passives. So going over that, you want to main your uh, at will, which is your main attack power that requires no cooldown. It's just always usable. Basically, if you're a, a, a fighter, you'd be swinging your sword. If you're an archer, you'd be shooting your arrows. And if you're a mage, you're shooting these ice uh, balls, chilling cloud. So this is the one you're going to want right here. Uh, it does do some amazing things. I'm not going to read everything to you. But in your build, 
this is going to be your most powerful damaging spell because it does have some AoE properties and it stacks chill on your target which as a mage is really invaluable because the more chill you have with this build the more damage you do overall. So chilling cloud is going to be your main at will power. You can put ray of frost on a secondary or really any other at will power you want but I find that I almost never use it so it's pretty much irrelevant. Now your first main skill that you're going to want to level is this conduit of ice. It's not particularly useful in the beginning of the game, but as you progress, uh, it's going to be adding constant damage, and the more damage you do, the more chance you have to crit, and then that'll spawn some extra lightning bolts, so you really want to be doing as much damage every .1 second as you possibly can. So this tornado provides constant damage over time, so you can use other attacks while it's still running and damaging your target. I highly recommend getting it to max level. Uh, the next spell you're going to want to go for is this Chilling Presence right here. It is a passive. Uh, this spell basically you have to do nothing with, it's just always active. And as we were talking about earlier, for every stack of chill that's on the target, you're going to be doing bonus damage. Really easy to get six stacks on all your enemy and keep them there. So this is basically just like free damage. Best way to really, really get to. Uh, the most bang for your buck when it comes to uh, hurting things. And then for your daily, your superpower, you're going to want to use this oppressive force right here. This attack hits every tenth of a second, and if you have full stacks of chill on your target, and if you've debuffed them to the point where they're going to take extra damage, and then you use your wheel of the elements for that extra 30% damage, this skill is going to do an absurd amount of damage. Uh, every tenth of a second it can hit for 50 to 100 plus thousand damage. And it does not have a cap on how many enemies that it can hit. So if you're in a huge crowd, it's going to hit all of them that are within, you know, like a 60 foot circle radius or 30 foot circle radius. I'm not sure the exact dimensions, but there is no cap on how many enemies that it can hit. Uh, that's why I do not use the Arcane Singularity, even though the Arcane Singularity is a cooler move. It just doesn't do that much damage. Uh, it has a big circle, but what it doesn't tell you is that it caps out at 8 enemies. So if you have 10 enemies in the circle, you cast the spell, it's going to randomly pick 8 of them that are in the circle, and it's not going to hurt the other 2. So I don't recommend using this spell, even though it is pretty cool. Uh, going down from there... The next two spells you're going to want to main. Uh, these are your encounter spells along with uh, that tornado. Those are your encounter powers. Those are the ones that do have a cooldown every time you use them. So the second two you're going to want to use are the icy terrain, which basically is uh, like Sub-Zero freezing the ground, if you're familiar with that from Mortal Kombat. Just, uh, it puts ice on the ground that, just like the tornado, does constant damage just increases your chance to crit and you can do other attacks while it stays on the ground damaging your enemies hits multiple enemies there is no cap so whoever's standing on it is taking damage uh, the next spell is right next to that one is sudden storm it puts out a straight line of lightning uh, and when you use feats which I haven't gotten to yet but when you use feats it'll basically uh, instantly get you at full stacks of chill on your target for anything you hit in a straight line in front of you. It does massive damage, it's easy to use and aim, and uh, it has a low cooldown. So I would definitely recommend using this as your other encounter power. Uh, it's much better than the rolling boulder in terms of just damage output overall. And it really, like I said, this, this lightning is the way to go right here. Um, I do use this ice knife right here as a second daily or ultimate attack you can have two equipped and this ice knife is a single target spell so it tends to, to do all right when you're fighting against one boss who has no adds uh, I still like the oppressive force better though I think even in single target the oppressive force can do a lot more damage than this ice knife unless you get lucky and the ice knife crits while you have full stacks and etc etc then I've seen it it do a pretty absurd amount of damage but again I think overall oppressive force is the way to go in terms of uh, your ultimate attack or your daily power 
Continuing down the list here, your last encounter power, which are just your standard attacks that require just a simple cooldown, is going to be this steel time move right here. Uh, it's a Nova attack, so again, AoE. It's going to hit whoever's around you. It's going to stun them for a second, slow them. And it's going to take that bonus and transfer it over to you, only because we have this spell slotted in our special slot of the R1 if you're playing on PS4. This ability you get right here, Spell Mastery, lets you equip a fourth encounter power. And when you equip this particular fourth one, whichever one you equip in that slot gets bonus stats or bonus uh, effects. So you're going to want to put Steel Time in that bonus slot because it really benefits your damage having the combat advantage. And if you're in a sticky situation, you can Nova and run really far really fast. And then last but not least, your other passive is going to be this Storm spell right here. It's an amazing ability that also requires you to do absolutely nothing. 30% of the time when you crit, an extra lightning bolt will come down and do an absurd amount of damage. I've seen it do anywhere from 60 to uh, 200,000 damage when it strikes, just depending on where your stacks are at and how everything is looking in terms of damage buffs. So every time your tornado is running on an enemy and you have the ice on the ground, when your crit chance is around 50%, you know that's a crit every other hit, and 30% of that time you're getting these lightning bolts to come down. It's just, this is the best build to maximize your damage output using the control wizard. Uh, you do function best with this build in AoE environments, so the more enemies the better. Uh, but you do have to be careful because this build does require you to get in close and as well it uh, leaves you open to damage if you don't have a good tank because you are a glass cannon you will die in one to five hits depending on which dungeon you're in so you pretty much have to have a good tank to really maximize your damage potential but if you do you will see yourself coming on the top of the damage boards pretty consistently I usually only lose out to great weapon fighters who are at my level or higher most everybody else I beat on the damage boards so if you want to stick around long enough, I'll throw up a bonus little dungeon run or something and, and show you me running through one of the endgame dungeons here. So those are your powers. Uh, we'll scoot over to the feats over here. I'm going to blow through this pretty quick. You're just going to want to pause the video on this screen and copy every ability on this page just how it is. Like I said, I'll briefly run through them here, but this is what you're going to want. Increases your crit chance, weapon mastery, you want that. Increases your hit points. I mean, you just have to put points in this to advance the tree. It's better than this skill. So, yeah. Keeps you alive a little longer. Fight on increases your uh, your cooldown rate, which is definitely important because you can attack more, you do more damage. Uh, this spell is a no-brainer. Your area effect powers deal more damage. Wow, I could probably respect this a little bit. Anyway... Over here, your cold powers deal more damage to targets affected by chill, so this stacks with chilling presence for a whole bunch of extra bonus damage that you're going to want. But yeah, basically, I don't know, I'm not going to run through all of these, but you can see how using this particular page setup the way it is will benefit you the most. Thalmaturge right here is your main tree. You're going to want to advance this one all the way to the end. And then Oppressor, you're just going to want to take it as far as you can get with your remaining points. Um, but this is really how I think you should use your uh, your powers here. Just looking through stuff here briefly. Bonus damage intelligence gives you, yep. See, when you spec for this, that's where the Valindra Belt really comes in handy. And that's why it outs the Tiamat, or I mean not the Tiamat, it outs the um, Valindra set. You don't want to use the Valindra set because the <sighs> Valindra set doesn't give you any good ben benefits. But you also don't want to use the full Lost Moth set, you want to split the two. Anyway, I spent enough time on this page. If you want to just copy it just the way you see it, that's the way you're going to do the best here. And for your boons, 
Uh, it's pretty easy when you're going through the game. You just want to pick every boon that benefits DPS. Like I said, it's a pretty easy choice. As you can see, all these powers on the top here are for a tank or a healer. You're going to want the 400 power for damage, 400 critical strike, obviously no brainer. Action points allow you to do your ultimate ability or your daily more frequently, so you want that. You want to deal damage instead of heal, so you want this power here. That's just uh, for Dread Ring. You're going to want to go for this last power, Elvish Fury here. And these are Sharandar, sorry, not Dread Ring. Uh, I actually get to earn this one today. This one stacks more power. So those are the ones you're going to want to go. Straight line across the bottom for Sharandar here. And those are going to be your DPS powers. Again, over here, you want the 250 power, I guess I pick that. You could really go either way for this one right here, crit or power. So either whichever one benefits you, probably probably crit would honestly have been better, but it's too late now, so power doesn't hurt either. Uh, lifesteal is much better than regeneration, so go with the lifesteal. You don't want deflect, so you gain 3% resistance ignored. That's going to help your damage. You want Shadow Touch. When dealing damage, you have a chance to deal up to 20,000 more damage. And you want Rampaging Madness, because 4,000 Lifesteal, 4,000 Regeneration, and 4,000 Power is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, that's what you're going to want to go for, Dread Ring. I have not done Icewind Dale yet, or the new content, so I'm just going to skip those for now. But again, it's pretty easy to see which ones are DPS. Combat Advantage is what you're going to want. Stamina gain is what you're going to want. Critical severity is what you're going to want. 2,000 power is going to be what you're going to want. And the action point bonus right here. Winter's Bounty is what you're going to want from Icewind Dale. Underdark, very similar. Go with the DPS powers. 400 power, 400 crit. No brainers. Combat advantage damage, no brainer. Control effects. Well, as a wizard, you do a lot of control spells, so that's the way you're going to want to go. And you're going to want gain 10% damage versus demons. So that's the way you're going to want to go with those boons. Tyranny of Dragons. Again, stick with the DPS. 400 power, 400 crit, no brainer. 400 armor penetration, also no brainer. This one, you're probably going to want 400 lifesteal rating. Uh, you could go with the regen as well, but this is kind of a useless boon. And then for the last one, you're going to want to put all three of your extra points in your increased critical severity. Again, that's going to increase your damage a lot. Uh, guild boons, if you have those, you're lucky. If you don't, try and find a guild. But they're a pretty no-brainer as well. I have the armor penetration power. Uh, there's a power bonus power as well, which is the one I'm going to switch to as soon as I hit the 60% cap for armor pen. But for now, this is the one I need. Defensive boon, just pick whatever's available, doesn't matter. And utility, which have an EXP bonus, so that's all I have for now. Maze Engine, again, DPS. You want the 5% lifesteal severity. 400 combat advantage bonus. Action point gain, you want that. And you want the 2000 critical strike for 6 seconds bonus as well. Elemental Evil, one last time. We'll do this DPS, 300 power. 4% lifesteal severity. 400 crit, those are all no brainers for DPS. And you want Gale of Retribution. Uh, these are all kind of healing abilities, except for the lifesteal severity, but uh, lifesteal is not really useful for a wizard, so I went with the chance to heal, just because you are a glass cannon, and because when this effect ends, your critical strike is increased by a thousand for ten seconds. So overall, this one's going to be better than the lifesteal severity, chance to heal, and some bonus crit. That's all for the boons that I have now. We went over companions. Uh, I will briefly say that if you're going to buy a $35 mount, or if you save up enough Zen to buy one, or Astral Diamond, sorry, to buy one through the Zen transfer, you're going to want to get a mount that gives you either crit or power. So either the Heavy Howler or the Guard Drake, I believe. It's the blue dragon that gives 2,000 power, or this beast right here that gives 2,000 crit. Those are going to be the only two that are really worth getting. And if you're rich, you can buy the Polar Bear as well, or you can get this Spider, which is what I did, because you're going to want Wanderer's Fortune. Now, all these mounts, you know, when you equip different little insignias on them, they're going to give you various bonuses. 
Most of these are pretty useful, but Wanderer's Fortune is the most important. It gives you a 4% chance to find the refining stones after you kill enemies. Uh, without this, and without any Dragon Horde enchantments, you have a 0% chance to find these stones. So getting Wanderer's Fortune and a couple Dragon uh, dragon enchantments, Dragon Horde enchantments, sorry, will allow you to start stacking the materials you need to upgrade your weapons as opposed to buying them. So saving up and getting a Wanderer's Fortune mount is also a necessity, but you're going to want the crit mount. As you can see, his uh, equip power is 2,000 critical strike. Uh, the other alternative would be the Guard Drake with 2,000 power. Uh, unless you're lucky enough to find an orange legendary mount, those are the two you're going to want to go with. Uh, and the reason I say get just these two is because they are account global. So if you buy the... Um, Polar Bear for Wanderer's Fortune, if you buy this Heavy Howler, or if you buy the Guard Drake, they are usable on all characters on your account. So if you have more than one character, you can use those however you like on whichever other characters. Now there's a couple other mounts that are really cool, like the uh, Drake um, Dragon mount, and then couple other ones but they are just one character specific so there's another purple mount that's a drake mount it's a, like a red dragon and it gives 2,000 crit as well but you can only use that on one character uh, so I would hey, tend to recommend buying the ones that are with any of your trade bars? <laughs> global so, to your account I have many fine goods for sale. so looking at that one right here you can find them in the trade bar section under mounts have you know the rage drake this is the one i was talking about 2000 crit that one would be the one to go with probably or you have the heavy twilight nightmare for 2000 power either one of those two would be good but they are account or character specific so they bind to your character whereas the other mounts can be claimed on any character once you pay for them so those are the mounts that i would recommend that's really all there is to it for this game um when you're in a group you're going to want to use your striker companion. As you can see, I have my purple bird with my bonding rune stones. And if you're soloing, if you're not using your striker, if you find you die a lot, I would recommend using a tank companion. So, I guess uh, that's pretty much all there is to it for the intros on how to build a DPS control wizard. Um, the Valinder set is a no no. You know, this is kind of the way you're going to want to go. And uh, for anyone who's not interested in this game, you know, sorry for the rant. But this is kind of what I've been spending my time on recently in this, this wake of gaming period where there's really not a whole lot going on. You know, I, I wasn't too interested in the um, Dishonored 2. Uh, I did buy Titanfall 2 and Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. So maybe I'll get some stuff up from either one of those two games. But for now, I've mostly been playing this. Uh, it's just a good way to waste some time. That's about all there is to it for this little video. I don't want to keep it too, too long. So I'll upload a little dungeon run in a separate video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if there are any questions you guys have, feel free to... Oh yeah, one last thing. I forgot. In your weapon and in your armor, you have special slots for a special enchantment. Um... For the mage, you're going to either want a soul forged enchantment or a negation enchantment. Uh, both of them are really, really expensive. They take a long time for you to save up diamonds enough to buy them. And obviously the better quality you get, the better it's going to be. Uh, the reason I, I use soul forged is because every time you die, it automatically resurrects you with a little bit of your health, enough for you to potentially survive and escape. Being the glass cannon that I am, I really make good use out of this one because I die frequently. And it doesn't require a teammate to come pick you up. Uh, you get one activation on this every uh, 85 seconds. So basically, every minute and a half, you can come back to life once for free. The negation amulet, or negation enchantment, sorry, is every time you get hit, you will stack a uh, defense bonus. Uh, to your to your damage resistance. Uh, that's not super useful for me unless you can get the transcendent or the pure, like the top two levels of that en enchantment. But they're upwards of like five plus million diamonds. 
So I'll stick with the Soul Forge for now because that's way out of my budget as a mostly free to play player here. Uh, for your weapon, as a wizard, you're either going to want one of two uh, enchantments as your main endgame enchantment. That's going to be the Dread Enchantment. Uh, it adds a bunch of critical severity just to your encounter powers only. And then it adds 30% uh, weapon damage as necrotic to all of your attacks. And it reduces your enemy's defense a little bit. Uh, 2% if you're doing PvE. Um, this is going to be the one you're going to want to get. Again, the higher quality the better. Uh, the other alternative to this enchantment is the Vorpal enchantment. It's really only useful if it's level 9 or higher. So if it's a greater Vorpal enchantment or better. Otherwise, it's not really going to do you a whole lot of good compared to this Dread. Um, but either Vorpal or Dread is going to be the way to go. Uh, you could also use a high level Lightning enchantment. But again, I'm just going to recommend the Vorpal or the Dread. Sorry about the dog bark. You know, shit happens. So again, Vorpal Dread in your weapon and Negation are Soul Forged in your armor. Uh, you do want some of the Dragon Forge. As you can see on my belt, you have a 2% chance to get a Refining Stone at your feet. You're going to want at least uh, one or two of those. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. In terms of your rest, rest of your enchantments, you're going to want to do the Azure Crit enchantments and all of your offensive slots. And uh, yeah, your defense slots, I just stack defense. That's pretty much the way to go. Uh, utility slots, movement speed. And that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough. Have a good one. <laughs>